I've been called names, you know. I've been beaten. It's it's not safe. Actually, I'm HIV positive. You know, to go to the doctors, you just lie so that they can register me and I get the medicine. I feel that if I like girls, then why shouldn't I be able to show it to the world that this is the person I love, this is the person I want to share my life with? Actually, I was on scholarship, but they cut it because they came to know that I was gay. We're trying to make it a safe place for us, and that's why we're not sitting, and that's why we're not quiet today. Some of us may not live to enjoy the liberation we are fighting for today, but there is hope. There is hope. about educating the people and educating young people, showing them what are the bad sides of homosexuality. It is against the natural law. Some of these people are just brainwashed. They will go on because they are, deep, they are driven by demons. I am not saying that they should be killed, but my advice to such people who are... It's the laws that are making people hateful. It's the religion, the culture that we've been programmed to be in that is making people so hateful because when you ask people on on the streets of Kampala they'll tell you they want homosexuals to be killed they'll tell you they want homosexuals to be um, imprisoned but if you ask them have you come across an open lesbian or a gay man they'll tell you no I've never even met any of them but why do you hate them that no it's because my my class teacher said it's not good my class teacher said it's against the law my preacher in church on Sunday say that it's it's a sin so they hate because they've been taught to hate and others I think it's just the fear we are doing a lot of research empowerment movement building in our own community I lived openly gay and that brought me into a lot of trouble. I was expelled from about three schools, suspended from two until university. And I did this because I was innocent. I didn't know that it was really illegal to be gay and it could lead to life in prison. They were writing about us being lesbians. People's names, people's pictures in the, in the newspaper, tabloid, where they work. Some people are married. They exposed all this in the media. On front page it says, hang them. On front page. After that article, people used to wait for us outside the bar. Many people got raped, people were attacked on their way home. The threats escalate. You know, there's a time I was even chased by motorcycles around because they wanted to teach me how to be a proper woman. And then they kept writing, hang them there after your children. And people really did it. People acted this year, three months after. 
we went we went to court and won the case against the tabloid but that didn't stop the violence Last week, a man was beaten to death with a hammer in his home. At the man's funeral, though, the local pastor leading the service turned from eulogizing the man who had been killed to instead railing against homosexuality. The pastor made clear that he would not be part of helping the dead man rest in peace. He would not conduct the burial. David Cato, the man who was killed, was one of the most outspoken activists for gay rights in his country. David is gone. He may never get justice. So I have this anger to continue the fight that David died for, so that his death is not in vain. And the government was the first one to come out to say that it's not a hate crime. They, they didn't even wait for investigations, they didn't even wait for for the trial to start for them, they came out and said, I want to make it very clear, it is not linked to him being an activist of the sexual minorities. David Cato's picture had appeared on the cover of a local paper as somebody who ought to be hanged for being gay. He knew he was in danger. David used to save people. He was bailing people out of prison, people arrested for being gay, people he never knew. Chicho, <laughs> I've just been on radio reading a statement to the whole country telling them that we do not recruit your children. My mother passes away and everyone in the family was blaming me. They said my mother was worried that I was going to be killed because people saw me on TV. She, you know, everyone blamed me for killing my mother. My mother was very supportive. She loved, she loved people. She didn't care who, where you came from, who, what you're doing and all this. She just used to keep telling us that, protect yourselves, be safe, be safe all the time. She was rejected by many people because she accepted me. We used to be beaten in the, in the 
ordinary bars and restaurants. And that's how I came up to open up this little cafe. People here uh, can easily even meet other people within the community without anyone, you know, throwing us out. David Cato spoke with NPR last year about the American evangelicals flying into Uganda to address members of parliament there at anti-gay conferences. They came up saying that we, gay people, were recruiting children into homosexuality. This man, David Bahati, believes that. He's a member of the Ugandan parliament. He's the main author of the Kill the Gays bill in that country, which, after visits from American anti-gay activists, was written and submitted to parliament. It establishes penalties up to and including execution for the crime of being gay. Despite reports that the I think we've seen the human rights situation in Uganda really deteriorate over the last few years. The LGBT issue has gotten a lot of prominence. One of the long-standing issues from a human rights perspective in Uganda has been impunity for abuses by the security services, both police and military. Um, both in September 2009 and in April of this year, 2011, we saw killings by the security services, particularly military police, of unarmed protesters and bystanders to protests. So we've really seen an authoritarian trend in the legislation that's been presented in parliament and discussed in government over the last several years. It's a real threat to human rights protections that we haven't seen parliament and the government try to live up to many of the good protections in Uganda's constitution. You're living your life with strategies. Every morning you have to strategize who am I going to meet, how am I going to present myself. So it's, it's a life of constant planning. You're not free to relate with everyone the way you would have wanted to relate to them because you are trying to hide something. I have female lesbian friends. I pretend they are my girlfriends. My family was very happy. They were like, finally. If my child becomes 16, I will tell her who I'm really I am. It's aggressive out there. And it's sad. The only thing I have close to me is a uh, a family of my fellow activists. They say that uh, God knows you even from before you're born, but would he have let me be born if he knew I was going to be a mistake? The LGBT movement in Uganda, the demand for rights protections, the demand for the decriminalization of homosexuality is young. Um, we've seen many new NGOs created over the last few years. I think the activists here have been exposed finally to international advocacy and human rights language. And it's been a, a really interesting and inspiring time to see this movement come alive and to see the activists as individuals grow into their roles as leaders. Kasha is a, a brave and courageous soul and her uh, eloquence is extremely important in showing government authorities that these are issues that deserve their attention and commitment. I've left this workshop saying that you want to become activists, but it's not easy, it's a lot of sacrifice and I'm not scaring you, but first sit down and make your security plan in case you, get, you start getting exposed like some of us. I know many of you are discouraged because of what front activists are going through because of what you hear when you go for prayers in church but let that not discourage you because at the end of the day it's your life it's your freedom it's your rights so it's up to you to sit back and find a way of how you're going to move forward with this struggle we all have roles to play we have thinkers we have action leaders here we have you know all kinds of different leaders so not all of us have to be on the front line, but again, we all cannot just sit back. We all have a lot to give, different uniqueness that we can bring to this struggle. We need to be unified. We cannot afford to break up because divided we stand, divided we fall. So we need to be together. And the only way we can be together is if all of us bring our uniqueness, our skills, our knowledge to make sure that we put it into action and we 
move forward to achieve what we really are fighting for, and that is freedom, liberation, respect, and dignity. Today, there's a debate in Uganda about homosexuality. It was not there a few years ago. Why? It's because of the resilience that we we resisted and resisted. And I know one day, I don't. I know I may not be around, but whoever will be around, I know we shall be happy wherever we shall be. I know one day this world will be liberated. Mm -hmm.